Hi, welcome back to Sharp Tooth Outfitters TV. I'm your host, Mike Gemstone. In this episode, I want to introduce you to my new rifle and tell you a little about what it is, some of the features, and why I chose this particular rifle. Stay tuned. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm excited. I've been waiting for this moment for quite a while. I've had this rifle and I haven't even taken it out of the box until now. Um, I've had it for a few weeks and I wanted to wait until I had everything together and was ready to start shooting these videos um, before I brought it out. So I'm excited, here it is. Um, before we get into anything detail, I wanna make sure of course that my firearm is safe and unloaded. Um, so you will not see any ammunition here on the table. I have opened the action. I have visually and physically inspected to make sure there's not a round in the chamber. And you'll see my magazines are here on the table. Those are out of the gun and unloaded as well. And again, no ammunition here on the smithing table. Now, without further ado, this, ladies and gentlemen, is the Howa Bravo. Now, the Howa Action and Barrel are made in Japan by the Howa Company. They've been around for decades. Uh, they produce military and civilian arms. And if you're familiar with the Weatherby Vanguard series of rifles, which have been available here in the United States for quite a while, Howa has actually been producing uh, those guns for quite some time now for Weatherby. Now, Howa itself has become more popular, more mainstream here in the United States and those guns are imported exclusively uh, out of Reno, Nevada by Legacy Sports International. Now, because I'm shooting the production class of PRS here for 2020, and I want to be mindful of my budget, I decided with this rifle right here would be a great way to go. This rifle is off the shelf, and this is chambered in six millimeter Creedmoor. Now I had a heck of a time finding a production rifle chambered in six millimeter. Now there are several manufacturers that do offer it. Um, I did like the Howa action, so I started looking at those. They do have this barreled action in several different chassis, um, but I did like the traditional stock style of the KRG Bravo. Just I'm normally shooting hunting style bolt action rifles. That's kind of what I've been uh, born and bred into. And so I'm not quite ready to go to a full-fledged chassis. Um, so I thought this would be a good start, and I really shopped hard to try to find a good deal because, again, trying to keep um, my budget in mind to, to get started. So what I was actually able to do was, uh, with a lot of late nights Google searching, was find this particular rifle. And this was on sale from Cabela's Gun Library. And I, I got in touch, the gentleman there uh, over in Texas uh, was able to give me a phone call and we talked a little bit about this gun. Now he didn't give me all the information that I would have liked to have had, but uh, I did ask, was the gun fired? It is an unfired gun and uh, it's actually in very good shape, but I didn't know until the box came that is a grade two item sold as is because you can see that it's a display gun, okay? So no worse for wear, a couple little scratches on it. That's okay, probably gonna paint it and it's gonna get tossed around. It is a tool. I like my guns nice and pretty, but this one's not necessarily gonna be getting the white glove treatment per se. Now the total cost for this gun, we were able to actually find it at a great discount because it is a display gun. It was 800 bucks for the gun. So by the time we factored in our tax, shipping from Texas, and the FFL transfer fee, I was in this gun for right about $900 as it sits, and I was able to, on eBay, get this uh, Magpul, was out of the package, but it's brand new, unused, not even a scratch on it, for uh, I think it was about $30 or $35. Um, these run brand new from Magpul, $40, $45, depending on where you look. The Accurate Mag actually came with the Howa. Um, these can be 60, 70 bucks, depending on where you look. Um, so that was a really good deal for this. And I think it's awesome that Howa includes such a nice quality mag uh, with their rifle right out of the box. So again, um, all told, just for the, the one magazine that came with it and the rifle itself, 
we're at $900 and about 35 extra dollars for our backup magazine here. Um, the Bravo stock, it's got some adjustability features, so you can adjust the, uh, the cheek piece here uh, with the turn of this screw that goes up. And as far as for your length of pull, and for any of you new shooters, your length of pull is going to be the measurement from the butt of the rifle that goes up against your shoulder to the trigger. So, as you can see, again, rifle's unloaded, and I take the gun to my shoulder, to my grip, to my trigger finger here. Now, the rifle and the chassis from Legacy is supposed to come with three uh, shims, spacers, if you will, that will change the length of pull to get this custom fit for me, okay? So I can adjust my cheek piece here for my cheek weld, and I can also adjust my butt pad for my length of pull. Now, I got long, gangly arms, even though I'm kind of short, so I definitely need to add something to give me a little bit longer length of pull. Now, because this is a secondhand gun, um, it did not come with the spacers. So I'm going to, instead of ordering them from KRG and spending extra money, I spent a couple of dollars to get some longer bolts from the hardware store, and I'm actually just going to use a piece of wood, and we'll do another video where I'm actually just gonna make a wooden spacer to go in there, and that'll tie me over. So a little bit of redneck engineering there to get my length of pool proper. Um, the other thing I do like about this chassis, so with a chassis uh, rifle, there is an aluminum frame, an aluminum spine, uh, if you will, backbone, that's inside of our um, plastic material for the stock, and our action mounts to that rigid aluminum frame, kind of like a skeleton, if you will. What that allows is a very nice rigid lockup for our receiver to the chassis inside of our stock. This also allows the barrel to be free floated. So this barrel, starting about here, is not touching any of the stock underneath. Now, if you're not familiar with free floating of barrels, it's a very effective way to accurize just about any firearm. The barrel, when the projectile is leaving the gun, going down the barrel, it creates vibration. The barrel needs to be able to freely go through those vibration cycles, if you will, without being encumbered, and therefore having that space in between the stock and the barrel allows that vibration to take place without interruption. Now, if you have an older style woodstock gun, like a whole hunting rifle, your, your favorite deer rifle, um, and you're having a little bit of trouble getting it to shoot properly, you may be well served removing a little bit of that wood and doing what we call a bedding job to get your receiver to sit properly in that stock with a nice rigid lockup and free float that barrel. Um, there are some videos uh, that you can see, some articles that you can read on how to do that. Uh, and of course, when in doubt, take your rifle to a competent gunsmith who can handle that for you. Um, so with that being said, pretty neat rifle here. Um, some of the things that I intend to do, we talked a little bit about adding the spacer in at the back. Um, I will, you can hear, ooh, makes me cringe a little bit. This is running pretty smooth in here, if you will, but because everything is Cerakoted and brand new, it hasn't really had a chance to break in and smooth out these surfaces. So I will put a very mild lapping compound in here to help to smooth this out which actions naturally will smooth themselves out, but that can take, you know, a thousand or so, um, cocking and decocking and sliding that bolt in and out of the receiver. Um, so I'll just put a little bit of compound in there to help speed that up. And um, also we'll lap the face of the bolt and that will make for a nice tight square lockup uh, inside my receiver with my locking lugs on my bolt. We'll do a separate video to show you that process um, and what you can do to help get that situated. Now, the other things that uh, I will do, because it's a chassis rifle uh, and the receiver is sitting uh, in a nice machined uh, surface to machine surface inside the chassis, I won't need to glass bed this, okay? If I have any problems, I'm not really gonna shoot right, I may give that a try, 
but generally with the chassis rifles, you do not need to do that. I will, however, be modifying this trigger a little bit. Now, per the rules of the Precision Rifle Series, and I highly recommend you check those out yourself, you have to use the factory trigger that comes with the gun. Now, you are allowed to safely modify that trigger. If you're in doubt, take your firearm to a competent gunsmith. None of the information that I'm providing with you today is gospel, uh, nor is it gunsmithing advice, nor do I suggest that you try it yourself if you're not experienced. Most people are not experienced enough to safely modify their trigger, so please take your rifle to a competent gunsmith. The original trigger must stay in to qualify for production, uh, but you can modify that trigger. Generally, out of the box, these howls will have about a three and a half to a four pound trigger pull. They are pretty nice triggers, pretty crisp, pretty consistent, but I think what we can do is lighten that down a little bit, get it to maybe about a two pound uh, trigger. That's a nice, comfortable trigger pull for me and uh, see if that doesn't help us out a little bit accuracy wise. Now, some other features of the gun. Um, there is a space here, like you see this on a lot of like, let's say the Magpul um, AR-15 stocks. You have the empty space in the grip. Um, this also has an empty space. There's a compartment here. Um, probably won't use that for anything. I will have my range bag with me when shooting and this will be hard to get to. Um, I'd rather have everything handy uh, in my range bag, um, but I will probably fill this space and some of the other voids that are in this stock with some sort of filler material to add some weight to this gun because you do want to have a little bit of heft that helps with the recoil and helps you stay on target. Now the other feature uh, that this gun has is this does have, you can see here, this does have a threaded barrel. So I'm going to remove our thread protector and in a separate video, we will talk about the muzzle device that we're gonna be putting on here. We are gonna opt for using a muzzle brake. And so that will thread on here to the barrel. And always be mindful, this is the crown of your barrel. And uh, a lot of accuracy problems start right here. The crown is a very fragile part of your firearm. You need to really make sure that you take care of that. That's the last point of contact when your bullet exits your barrel. If you have a nick uh, or a burr, on your crown, that's what's gonna be the last thing that touches that bullet, and obviously that's gonna have a negative impact on your accuracy downrange. So, I highly recommend that you be very careful uh, when you're handling your rifle, and make sure you take very good care of the crown of that barrel. So, um, that pretty much wraps it up for now. This is our Hawa M1500, six millimeter Creedmoor. Uh, bolt action rifle in the KRG Bravo chassis. Um, stay tuned. We'll show you uh, as we make our modifications to the gun how we're doing that. And uh, you can keep track of our, our redneck engineering project for our spacer here in the back. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments section. If you have a, have a Howa M1500, especially in the 6mm Creedmoor, uh, whether it's in the Bravo chassis or they do offer it in several other chassis configurations, leave some comments. Let us know what kind of luck that you've had with your Howell and uh, the results. We'd love to see those, uh, those targets. So again, leave your comments, leave your questions, hit that thumbs up button, give us a like, and make sure you subscribe so that way you can get our new videos as they come. We'll be putting them out daily, dealing with our rifle, our hand loads, and um, the accessories that we're going to be using. In our next couple of videos, you're going to see we'll attach our rail, our mounts, and cover and talk about our scope, all that good stuff. Thanks again for joining us, Sharp Tooth Outfitters TV. I'm your host, Mike Gemstone. Take care. Good shooting.